All right, Jeremy, for your guilt. For your guilt pleasure, it is 23 hours and 35 minutes. 23 hours, 35 minutes, it's almost midnight. Every place has been closed, right? I have high blood pressure. I have this raging headache since I haven't been smoking my medicine, which is pot. Um, yeah, my doctor prescribed it to me way back before I got into trouble with my upstairs neighbors um, for my blood pressure. Yeah, and it, 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 it says on the container for, you know, migraines. So when my upstairs neighbors, Jeremy and uh, Itzik, you know what they did, right? You said, Itzik, I put you in a pickle. Yeah, well, now I'm gonna have my friend Kent help me with this pickle. I got a pickle, dude. The guy from the uh, shell is not understanding that his point market is making it so I can't go inside the uh, shell here at Walnut. Yeah, I'm across from the Magnolia. Oh shit, I can't lock my door because uh, the company Ford gave back my car, right? All fixed and new. The key batteries are all dead. Yeah. I'm, I'm marking all of this, Kent, of their wonderful work at this Perry Ford. Nina, you got a lot of friends, Mama too, it's, all, it's still on your license plate. You got to talk to these people. I talk to people about how I'm going to make my car go through the Lemon Law. And these actual companies said, oh yeah, Perry Ford, let us know how it turns out. I can't do anything, we're sorry, but we can tell you afterwards in court that they have a a track record that we'd have to send you to Vreeland for it if we really thought, you know, you wanted to have a good service of this car that you paid so much money. I hope this place, Ralph's, is open for you, buddy. Jeremy, because I need that medicine. Oh my God, it's still open. COVID times, where I'm gonna tell you, the Vons that kicked me out, um, for filming that they had bad meat and pointing out that, uh, oh, what was it? That I was in this empty Trisket aisle, right, with the crackers, and I was filming myself telling, you know, the YouTube public, look how they're lying this company. It says they're low sodium, but I just started to read the side and saying, I was just saying people who have my illness can't be eating those. It's, it's, uh, they're fooling you. It's, it's not the low sodium. It's like uh, a drinking, like an alcoholic, take it from one. Um, the drinking of the uh, non-alcoholic beer, <laughs> it, it isn't. There's alcohol in there, dudes. Don't all you try. There's like 6%, mama. But yeah, that's enough to get you wasted. And me, it's just going to make me go, oh, come on. Remember, John told you. I want that glow, he said. Yeah. And it never ends, you know? You just gotta keep drinking till you pass out. Yeah, it's a thing, PTSD. He did not pass out well. I remember once, Nina, do you remember me having to call you from that neighbor who was always mean to me? She was from Germany. She had this accent. She'd always kick me out of her lawn, right? I was afraid of this smoker inside this house. Well, when I was hiding and everyone was out on their dates and Lesia was probably on a kibbutz somewhere, I don't know, in her brain, um, you were on a date, but somehow this lady saw me hiding in the Johnson's uh, boat. She noticed I had to do that often, just climb out of my window and hide. You know what Mama did when she heard this story? She and John nailed <laughs> my window shut. You see how they are wrong? She, she was trapping me inside the house, this abusive house that nobody wanted me to talk. And I keep telling Mama, you should have let me talk that one time. She knows what time it was. I tell her the exact spot. She, I know that she, had, she was living with an alcoholic. I was trying to tell her that. <sighs> But you guys had me all hiding stuff, like correct all, right? You understand? That was that other video, that other audio. I was trying to talk about Karen Carpenter. I was talking about people telling me all my life, 
mostly exes saying they didn't want to enable me anymore. Could you imagine if I'd said that to you and John before I was going off to get your supplies or not tell mama something? And then you guys afterwards, when she gets home, John's like got a chair. You're just trying to sleep, you know, just, you know, getting over your things. And he's wanting to bash you over the head in some blackout. Why? Because uh, he was super drunk from alcohol. I got him. And you were probably sick from what I was doing, you see. And I didn't realize that until I was at uh, Aspen. I was at the Aspen Summer School. I was all alone in this one place far away from Aspen, actually, Snowmass, where some cop, yeah, didn't like my California plates. He uh, said something was out. He was going to take all my points away. Yeah, that's how they did it there. He threatened me. It's the same year I met um, Jack Nicholson during, uh, oh, you'll love this, during, uh, oh, John, I said Ambrosia would have liked this story. It was during, uh, yeah, I'm talking because there's people and stuff. Jeremy, you didn't ruin me. Even though that walnut shell station, Ken, you didn't understand my video. If I have to touch their keys, if I have to walk into the point market to get to the shell toilet that he didn't want to clean suddenly when I was pointing out, dude, I got pictures of, of hypodermic needles that weren't used for, oh my God, I'm not going to get into this with you. Dude, I just knew that they weren't used for diabetes. I knew the ambassadors to the shell team. You don't understand. They're wearing a shell shirt. I, I got in a fight with one of their shell employees. She was still wearing the shell vest, but she was in public. And she started yelling at me that I can't film her in public. And I was going, do you know what a First Amendment auditor does? Do you know what a First Amendment audit is? But do you know the First Amendment? It's uh, freedom to film in public. You guys have to get that one first. Then there's the freedom of expression in the way that I was protesting, which was just to point out they were being dicks out of public. And this Jeremy said to me that same thing. It was though he didn't want to deal with the bathroom because it's shell. He's got these television screens I've asked him to turn down at night. He doesn't need them at three in the morning. He must turn them down. And he laughed. And I said, you're laughing at the Ramada Inn? Wait till these French journalists who are coming to visit about this story since the Independent. You guys, at least call me and say, stop mentioning us. But you didn't even pass by to bring me some water. And you definitely didn't clean up your stand and your drivers and how they're leaving stuff on my land. You guys are laughing, but I'm dual nationality. Cried and Sandra hasn't, uh, hasn't changed her name. And uh, per day, Lord Cryden has got my back. That's my daughter. So they're keeping the cried and no matter what, no matter if they get remarried, you understand it's very important to me, Bodnars, that you understand that we have environment issues and you have genetic issues and you cannot text somebody like you do and can't you can't you can't attack not attack but do the big brother when we haven't gotten all the you haven't gotten your brother's side of the story like nobody has gotten my side of the story. And Nina, you keep telling me what I need to do with this journal that I'm handing to you. It doesn't say, do not open. And I'm doing it for you and I'm talking softly and I'm not attacking anyone. So what are you guys worried about? Can't you just sit hand in hand? Do what I said, you have to crank the treble up. I'm trying to make this binaural recording which means look it up you'll know what it is later go oh that matches with the ANSD but if I tell you all these things like I told you can't like write it down I'm yelling at you you're not understanding what it is the auditorial because you might have the same thing we both played in a band instead you just said to me 
I'm just repeating verbatim that, oh, no, you did it like that. You, you did like my mama. You just said, no, it's not happening, brother. Uh, I'm whispering to you, my sis- your sister right now. You heard it. That's not happening. And this crackling sound, like, like your sister said, just get over it. And I'm going, no. You said I could be selfish. You're not understanding me. I need to be selfish. You said you needed to help me. Well, my doctor says I need help to be selfish instead of enabling you guys to just continue to act the way you are. If you don't listen to any of my videos for two years during the experiment, Nina, especially the Bennings one, which is just me going in and talking to the guy and he's manhandling the cello and you can hear it creaking. And then he's telling me all this stuff about it. That's true. And mama can't find the person that he said, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I know you're Nina's sister, so I'm going to rip you off on this bow. That he was just weighing the bow. You could hear it. And he was going, because there wasn't enough ivory, right? But he's going to make money on that bow. It's a good bow. You can't get a bow that cheap. 100 bucks he gave me, Ma, uh, Nina. Would you have done that standing there uh, holding my hand? Or would you have like looked for the thing that he wants, the thing that will prove that that cello is worth something? You understand? But it's falling apart. My hand is messed up since six years ago when those cops came in and did Kent. It was illegal what they did. And Itzig, you just said to me, you know, you put me in a pickle. They came. I don't know what you did. I'm like, dude, I went to jail. They did a thing. They ripped up the floor. You should know. They came in. They're not even supposed to have that much money. And they showed it off. And then I point out the Lexus that they shouldn't have two of them. I get sent to jail immediately after that, after pointing out that the floor got torn up and it's giving me PTSD, Nina. See, you got it. It, it creaks in a way that at four in the morning, I always think it's John Horton trying to sneak over those nolo, n- n- linoleum orange, disgusting uh, tiles. They weren't tiles, it was that linoleum floor with the green avocado walls and the stainless steel brand new. Everyone needed that. With the little handle thing from the French, right? That we should do in the showers like they do because we can, we can angle the, the flow any direction. We can go against rules of gravity. People, we don't have to stand on our head to get those special places. And they have a V-Day right next to it. We make fun of it. But that's for the women or maybe the they and the thems or just myself getting super clean without having to take an entire shower. And you can find these things. They're like 200 years old, still working. We can't find those things at all. You understand? Yeah. All right, let's go get those drugs. See, I feel better just that I can get them. That's all I needed. But you, Jeremy, you took away that safety. There's nowhere in Santa Barbara. And, and, and Kent, if that... If that is that true that you know the owner then you must have him call tomorrow like the Syrian guy did for me to translate to these people that I'm not the bad guy and he must let me back in or I'm going to release those photos that he laughed at saying those are big allegations and I said no the photos man see why would he care Jeremy Why would you care? It sounds like what Ken's telling me that you don't like what you told me. Either you don't have anything to do with their bathroom or you do, but everywhere you're doing a publicity. He's doing a publicity camp at a fuel depot on Hollister where he allows you to go back to that shell market and get their point blank stare. You know, I'm back to the drugs. Um, It's just, it is his market. Ken, you just tell the owner, I will once again 
like I'm doing, I'm dealing with corporate. I, I went through a lot to get to corporate. They know I sent him uh, an audio like this, especially for him explaining the situation. He said it had to go through New York Shell corporate and I did it and they sent it to him and then they told me he, he's got it. You went through the right channel, so now he's heard it. So why would the Shell station can't like do that if he doesn't have something to do with it? He, um, I finally call him, see? He didn't call me, give me the numbers. His minions working there laughed and gave me the 800 number. I guess you haven't heard that audio where I tell you, if you call this number, for the Saturday and Sunday that I needed them, they're not there. It says on the recording, it's very deceiving. They say it's because of the COVID, but I know I already called this number for another reason at that shell station where they said the pump, it wasn't their fault. You understand? But had I gone in and, and explained the situation to them, had they been in there at that 3 a.m., the situation wouldn't have happened. But instead, I proved that they were in the back smoking crack, right? Because they weren't there. But they just said, hey, no, it's not true. He's a liar. So the people from this point market, and I've been kicked out of anywhere in town that has a point market in their gas station, like that um, Walnut one. So I'm just saying the days, the nights that I was screaming in pain, waiting, you know, for six o'clock so I can go to the Syrians and just get some aspirin. You understand? Now I'm looking here. They don't have the right ones. See, they just have Tylenol. I can't have that. Did you know that, Nina? Mama still doesn't understand. She goes, yeah, I got high blood pressure too. So here, take all these special... Tylenols, and I'm going, no, my doctor would kill you. Do you have a lot of doctors like that behind you? Here we go, Advil PM. Ibuprofen, no, I can't have that either. Did you know that? No, it's gotta be Actifin or, no, no, it can't be Actifin. It's gotta be NCAD. Yeah, that is, what is that? They don't make it anymore. That's Excedrin, yeah, John Horton. Used to chew on those like the alcoholic character writer in The Shining. That was just uh, Stephen King writing about himself. You understand? It's a, it's a nightmare in our heads. But it's, you, you, you're, you're, you're forgetting the whole story. You're not caring about the PTSD that they gave me. You're not caring that they threw me in jail. You're not caring or understanding that the police department came in and did all these wrong things from just coming into my house that was already illegal and that they took all those things off my record but Lyft heard it as though I'd beat up all these cops that's how it was written yeah so it's a, I can't call Lessa right now or Lesia I know you said she loves me and that I should just call her yeah and I said no I'm doing the thing I ripped my shirt until she apologizes to mama once again Kent everyone it's a Nina if she doesn't apologize to mama, I'm taking it as a direct affront to her brother, who I'm not gonna try anymore. So, until she does that, I'm not listening to any of you. You must understand that. You either take my side, like Nina said, you took my side, but no, you have my back like Ingrid said. I don't even remember how we split up the last time. She did it in this way, like her mom and dad were there. And uh, she kind of just, w at a, during the party, um, just kind of came by and said, I'll, al I'll always have your back. It took me a while later to go, oh, that's when I got dumped. Yeah. So you see, you know, that whole thing, like I'll always have your back, it doesn't mean it. I need you to listen to those recordings and sit and listen and back up and find the Bennings one. Instead of being like, you know, you should send it through my text instead of through my emails. No, you should figure it out for mama so she can get it through her emails. 
You say, hey, just do the opposite of what you're thinking or watch that show. She refuses to get it. She could have gotten it so easy two years ago and just watched it. And she would have been doing that, being doing the opposite. So it's kind of like that, guys. Have you seen that show? Do you know what show I'm talking about? Do you know how much better George's life becomes when he starts doing it? Yeah, you got to try the game. But Nina, you didn't want to play the game and you won it by accident, PTSD. But if you're not understanding that, those neighbors, need to, it, it needs to be fixed. Not you guys surrounding me with wagons and not allowing the good neighbors to tell you the story of who I am. It's just that. You can't start fixing me um, because I have to fix myself and I'm learning about myself and the only way I can do it is just talking like this but knowing that somebody listens to it. I cannot have you talking back to me like you did. You didn't even listen to the first one, you, Nina. You just wrote, well, before I start this listening and I was like, oh my God. And you give me this paragraph about what you think about the cops. What do you think about the ones, what they did to my hand? Nina, I can't play the cello anymore. And you didn't understand that from like six years ago when I told you? <sighs> you should have looked at the videos. I keep showing my hand. I show you everyone exactly how messed up. It's, it's an obvious thing. I showed it to Dan Brooks and he went, whoa, oh my God. But like he had to pee or something after I started to talk. Like you guys, you got to go do something. So I guess either it's non-believable or come on, don't be like, I know you said, I say that dramatically. I've been saying that all my life. I quit this cello and I've done it. I already proved to myself that that's not the thing. I'm just being dramatic. And since I don't drink anymore, that I don't say those things anymore. But now it was taken away from me it's actually awesome it, it made me do this other thing this is my new act I just talk if you don't like it even though I'm trying to be honest then you can't get me to a gathering and force me to say any of it at any time because you only give me an hour but I only get like three minutes and you guys always do the talking like that text telling me well tell us another time no, you blew it when I pointed out that I'm the 1%. I'm the only auditor. This auditor gets thrown in jail. You don't care. You guys were talking about Mac. Where is Mac now? You see what happened? We just stopped the talking. We stopped those fake interactions. You don't bother Xanthi. That's how it was supposed to be, Bodnars. Work on your Bodnar thing. Get together, Bodnars, for your brother before he starts to say that he's adopted. But I am a Criden. You don't know what it is. I got other Crydens connected to me. They know what it is. So, and I know Bodnar, right? You heard, I, I listened to his last recordings, on his last phone calls. If you didn't hear that recording, Nina, please don't have me repeat everything like I did with Mama and then say, okay, I get it. You're not at the fuel depot. You're at a supposedly world gas station, but the blue and white. You guys were trying to like tag where I was from, from, from the picture. Oh my God. The fuel in the world, they look the same. And if that really mattered to you, brother, then you should know Shell. It looks the same. Hey, that's such an awesome leather. That's such an awesome leather jacket. Yeah, uh, it's a duster. You're wearing a duster. Is that what it's called? Yeah, those are awesome. I've never seen an employee wearing the coolest stuff. Thank you. Yeah, Ralph's people. They got good meat. They got good customers. They stay open. They don't say, stop what you're doing. Why are you talking into your phone? We can't have that. Don't come back. So, yeah, that's how you can help me, guys, is let me go to the bathroom in the places I used to go very necessary for everyone for the homeless who were there that I was sneaking into this 76 bathroom you see so many things that I've been doing and it's so hard to explain it to you 
when on my channel it's just two years of just hours of this and to have you come back at me anybody as though i'm the same person i was in your heads and you're the same person you writing the same things as though you know something all right what are we going to do i think since they don't have what we need simply sleep oh my god it's 15 bucks you see jeremy look what you're forcing me to do all right i've never taken these two non-habit forming that's such bullshit oh i can have this though Di di diaphragm oh i gotta i gotta take like eight of these all right it's the cheapest stuff mama you want an oh sleep aid what's this oh but it's the it's donaline succulate tablets which they just say in the cvs oh it's the same thing they 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 don't even know what they're giving you no I'm, i tell them oh wait this is on sale and it has the diaphragm and 50 milligrams there we go I don't have to take as many. Perfect, 32 soft gels, and it's a sizzling deal at $6.99. All right, now that's gonna be good. And that's gonna be, I won't take a bunch, so it won't be habit forming, and I won't try to extract it and do some Breaking Bad side project, dude. But I was pointing that stuff out to them, Ken and Nina. If you've never seen Breaking Bad, you won't get any of those references. Just like if they don't know who Nathaniel Rosen is or cares, they won't get my true to life references. Excuse me, sorry. They are so cute. Yeah, I love the dance. This one I've been watching. Yeah, they had a, a duster. They didn't even know, but they took out their earpieces, right? To be like, what, what, yeah, so. I love pointing out when people are cool and they're working in these places. You see that, Kent? That guy's not gonna fall down some stairs and they're gonna go, no, it's because you wore that duster. Uh, because you wore the duster and that's not really, you know, Ralph's attire. This is what Jeremy was saying to me because I don't know, she, they were off the property. They can do whatever they want. These ambassadors wearing the shirt that's in these commercials that they scream out of these television sets, right? They're next to the pump. I don't know if you heard it blaring um, during that one where I'm talking to the fuel depot lady who talks like Gretchen Gaber, right? My triggers of just abusive um, professionals who aren't professional. I thought you were supposed to smile, look person in the eye, let them talk understand the thing all she said was nah after all that dude i knew her for 20 years can't so it doesn't matter she called jeremy that's why she kicked me out that's why she made that 70 cent rule that i if it wasn't over 70 cents and that just made me go insane because they can't act like that to anybody brother so if you know that owner, you gotta say, dude, he knows her. He knows that place when it was a world, when there was an Armenian. You gotta tell him the story. If you guys were listening hand in hand, listening to the recording, putting the treble up. It's the treble dial. I'm trying to make it sound like a, a cassette. I'm trying to make it sound like old time, but you don't have to crank it and make me sound very aggressive. Make it super soft. So you guys have to really listen in. You might fall asleep. It'll go in through your subconscious. But you guys are just fighting it, pushing the stop, saying, I don't understand that he must be crazy. Let's put him away somewhere. I know it's not what you're doing, but that, Nina, do you know how many rehabs I did in France? No. Do you know what, do you know what drug I'm being sober from? It's not the alcohol. I'm taking a drug to keep me from drinking this stuff. I, I get sick, I tried it a little while ago. I got my little, got this little bottle of vodka. I tried just drinking a little bit. I, I, I got this little buzz and then I was sick for three days. Did you know that I have to do that? Nobody goes that far into the program. Read some Dan Fonte, right? But nobody liked it. Do you know he came 
to Mac, Nina, and that Ingrid and I were scared out of our minds that he, he would just go to his real act, which is just yelling like I do. But he's really raw. He's done the meetings. You don't like meetings. I kind of do now. I didn't. Remember when we were speaking? I didn't. But now, damn, it's just down the street. And I get all these characters. And I learn all these things about the actual bipolar incidences and my drug incidences. And, and I'm helping other people, like actually sitting in the meeting going, well, I'm actually here. They like my stories. They listen. They laugh. They don't go, no, like you guys do. Let us just settle this our way. You know? No, I'd have to go. Like I said, you didn't get the reference. Kurt Cobain is like my idol. I, if you looked at the videos, I'm driving around in Mama's car. But he, his, his poster's back there. He's smoking in a studio in Germany where everyone says, you can't smoke in studios. It's so bad for it. But they let him. Why? Because they knew his smoke, just like those old jazz and blues players, made it so it, it sounds the way it does. So please don't be American with me when you know that Kurt Cobain's bipolar from his environment. You are not. You are from genetic. You see, I'm not going to tell you what you have. I'm going to tell Lesia someday what I heard um, when she didn't meet Bodnar at some restaurant in, uh, in L.A. She just wanted him to leave this car. He was giving her, I guess, for a birthday uh, in guise of, I think he was trying to just start to have a relationship with his daughter. Of course, Lesia had visions of what Mama said. Maybe you did too. But Lesia stopped it by just being herself and saying, I want it this way. Mama stopped it by stepping in and just negotiating and allowing her not to see her dad to make the attempt to just say, thank you. I'll have a lunch with you. I don't, you know, want to be here. I'm taking this present, but that's what we're taught, right? So when I flipped it and said, well, look, if she could do that, change her name, Xanthi's actually a Crichton. I can take that Bodnar off quick and easy. And you guys were saying she had to be there on this Christmas where I'm like, can you just, she's sick, she's like me. Can you not do it? Just think that it's about the kids Christmas time. Could you do it just one time for my birthday that you guys always mess up and everyone else does too. But nobody could do it and mama and you needed her there and she did what happened. She got sick. Actually, that's what we do. When you guys force us into something and we tell you we're sick, but you don't want to just be like, okay, I know you're not sick, but I know you well enough that we can't do this thing like, just keep running, fake it till you make it. All those expressions, it doesn't help. So how can I share all these things like, just say, well, the washing of the hands didn't work. You could have hugged me anytime you wanted, Nina. You didn't have to do that thing in front of the CVS, especially the CVS, saying, oh my God, I hope we don't get COVID. N Mama could have had me upstairs. I'm going to keep repeating that. She messed up the whole experiment because she was supposed to have me inside her house. And she could have. We could have COVID it for her psychologically, taken one room. I would have just taken showers like in the toilet. That didn't matter. She just said no, because she wanted to believe what she was believing. And she was watching her C and NBC. She's going to tell me that's not how it's pronounced. But she also said, hey, this story with Jeremy, write it out, send it to Meadows. And I'm going, my God, are you trying at every corner to always stop? when I do something different. Can you find out what a journalist does? Do you know that I'm writing for the free press? Alternative press, do you know what it is? Do you know my job? Do you know what a First Amendment auditor is? She still hasn't looked it up. She, she, she gave up trying to even try lying that she was gonna 
talk to one of the nephews about this show. I said, yeah, just have them explain that if you say the opposite show, they'll explain it. Just do the opposite, Lana, of what you're planning to do. Whatever you're planning to text me, Nina, think about it. And just for fun, write the opposite thing. A lot of times it'll be like, whoa, I should just listen more. Can you tell me more about this story you've been trying to tell me for six years at every one of our gatherings? Yeah, six years, people. Wow. So it had to stop. You understand, Nina, that's why I became mean. It's not the bipolar. I got it under control. I have a, a doctor. You still don't know who it is. Mama says she needs to know who it is for this to go. She said that every year at the anniversary of you guys are listening. You're not being sensitive. Yeah. And you're acting the same. And I guess it's hurting you or bothering you that I'm just not going that way. I'm not doing the same. I'm doing the opposite. I'm not going your way. And I did, you know, I learned from the last mistake. I got this vaccination halfway done but once I realized that they didn't know all those things that I talk about in all these other videos I said I don't want to do their system so I told mama I'm not going to take the other half so she's she's going to have to deal with me at one point mask and all and she's going to have to stand there and at least apologize for being wrong about the COVID so if you don't you know Nina and can't if you don't apologize to me about this COVID and what you guys think it is. Apologize that you don't know what I told you it was. And Mama too. Yeah. Especially when it was coming directly from a doctor's mouth. Didn't matter who my doctor is. Just like you, Nina. There's a bunch who are behind him. But it meant to me, oh, this is a good deal. Crystal geyser, alpine spring water. We can get that for the guinea pig and the kitty cat and me. Did you know that the guinea pig can have this super power water and this stuff? Someone else told me, oh, you're sick. Why don't you get this pH balance stuff? And I'm going, dude, if it's bad for a guinea pig, huh, why, you know, why are you giving it to me? Guinea pigs are nervous as hell and they've learned how to control their bodies so that they seem like Buddhas and when you hold them, they calm you down because they're being so calm. They taught you how to, you know, be calm. But if you don't listen, vegans, that's you, Nina. To these animals, that's me, Nina. You got to listen to your, this animal. I know you're staring at this going, I've been listening to you babble. For hours, that's what um, Jeremy said. <laughs> My friends, and did he help me these past years? No. So maybe you guys shouldn't say that. Why does it say call attendant? Oh, let's go to the other one. We're at these things, I love this part. Nina, do you guys love this? Not having a teller. Sorry, brother. But yeah, I don't have to deal. It's, if it was you, I'd love it. Why are you saying check? Oh man, it's fighting me. I was saying how wonderful it was. It wants me to put it on a different side. I gotta put it on a different side. There's no reason why I should, but that's how you guys are gonna do it. Alternative ID, 805, call me, 964, Nina, when you get a new phone, 2171. If you still have a landline possibility, that's the way I would love it, Nina. It sounds so good and your voice sounds great. Um, you get one of those cheap, phone shit it's telling me. i'm just gonna leave it on this side i'm not gonna care it's saying running total zero it's not even letting me buy bananas which are very good for high blood pressure did you know that nina it pulls out the well 753 for sleeping attire okay uh pay now not yet i gave the id i thought did i not let's put it again so my number is one for you who think it's gonna make a difference? 9642171. Now, those of you who call, we're sorry. Oh, 
My number, oh no, I don't want the attendant. My number is no longer good with them. Kent, can you tell them that I've given this number out? This one is supposedly Laura Hackstein's. It's not valid. All right, let's not give them any number. It's not gonna, none of this stuff is gonna be cheaper. Let's just find out how we do the, done. I'm sorry, backspace. Oh, it's not gonna, I don't wanna do this. Go back, okay. Item lookup, this is fun. No, no, I don't wanna do that, go back. Oh, item lookup, search by picker, search by name. Yeah, it's the mask people, I'm not on drugs, it's just, all right, bananas. Um, have the, do the cops here have body cams yet? No. So Nina, did you call them and say, where are your body cams? How many times have you done that for your brother? None. Um, did you do what I told Nina to do? La Mama is to ban all shells in Santa Barbara County who don't allow your son or your brother to, you know, go to the bathroom or buy gas. How do I do this? I'm not really finished. I can't see the scan thing. I guess I am going to have to get a, a human to do this. Uh-oh. All right, let's see how much trouble we can get into. I, I'm having trouble. Is there a... I don't know where the, the scan thing is on the geyser thing. On the water. Right here. Oh, thank you. And the item's going here after you scan them. Yeah, but it kept telling me that it didn't want them. It kept it, saying... This is the bagging area. That's yeah, not but, the bagging area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, that's why I put it back. Because I put it in the bagging area. And this thing was saying, put it back. It was saying, you have some... It was making me put it on the thank other you. side. Yeah, thank you. See, he doesn't care. That's okay. Yeah, once I start talking, they're just like, I don't want to know the real story. That's you, people. That's anyone who loves me. Yeah, and that guy was being professional, so he had to love me. All right, I stick in this $20, and she lost this part. It's like Vegas. Will they give us back change, people? Oh, I got to put something else. Pay now. Then I got to help, help us on the way. I'm sorry. I, I, I tried to keep you out of the loop. But I love you as help. With your duster, it's okay. Four items. You even have trouble. Oh my God, it just told my whole life story. You're not going to follow me home, are you? Yeah, it just showed my... Uh, dudes, it just... Enter the number of bags. All right, I always write one. I'm going to tell you, you're going to hate me for doing this, but then I take three. I'm sorry, people. I have to get... I have to get back at Shell and Jeremy in some fashion. And that's how I'm doing it, Jeremy. You see how I'm gonna just take it out on these four other chains that are still letting me in. Maybe you should call him. So yeah, Kent, he has that kind of power. If you're my big brother, you gotta, you gotta protect me. And Itzig, you, you still have the power to stop those upstairs neighbors. Um, which would help the police report, which would help my lawyers, you understand? But if you want me calling Lassie, if that was the story, well, she's got to apologize. Once again, I take it back to, I'm taking five bags in front of the guy. He, he, he saw that I only pushed one. See, people? And it's a big thing of water. It has its own handle. I'm being bad on so many levels. I'm, I'm overusing my, my footprint in this city of beauty, right? Where there's spray paint um, up in the, the hills of the, uh, <laughs> God, hot springs. And the neighbors want these people out, so they kick us. And then, of course, you know the story about Dudley. I keep mentioning Dudley. She is... Um, the district attorney who's going to take care of this, who took care of Johnny and helped fix the situation. Her daughter's name is Ellen Dudley, and she had a band, this Ellen named Dudley. And I played in it, and um, Joe Woodard played in it. I mean, they were mostly the band. I played in it because they asked me. Everyone in town used to ask me to play stuff, all the bands, because I was the only cellist who could just play that kind, anything they wanted and didn't complain, bless you. And, and they didn't tell me 
I should play. I'm always playing in the fifths. Bless you. If you did that, I'm playing for you for free. You know I'm just doing it by, by my ear, by whatever. And you wanted to break that while I'm playing on your album. And then you said, oh, it was so wonderful. When I hated how I ended up playing there. You can't even hear it. Yeah. But I have the recording. Do you still have that recording? I got it on analog. I know you don't have it on analog. There you go. I will win. I know you guys are going, Ugh. but here's how I win. Lesia, Nina, and Lana. These are very calm. But what would be really funny and what everyone's waiting for is I've always mentioned you guys, but never just said the actual story or just said how I felt. I was being like, proper like my doctor not listening to your recordings to me nina or your texts to me nina and ingrid and xanthi i'm just saying to everyone if if i did two years of making this effort to extract this these kind of brain waves that i have I don't see how you're coming back when the COVID isn't even over yet. Not apologizing for past things that were before the COVID. And just acting like business as usual. You're all acting the same. I think I said that. I think that's what's blowing me away. Key battery low, replace soon. Perry Ford, you see, it's gonna trigger me if I see it each time. So I will be putting these things out. You gotta, I know there's a way. You must stop that, that's doing that. Look, it's, it's did it again. Washer fluid level low, dee dee dee. It did that when I, it was crashing the car and your 24 hour service seven, Perry Ford. They didn't find me either. You guys didn't even ask if I was okay. How did I get home? But I talked to one of your minions in New York. Yeah, that was very upsetting to find out that everyone here ask that one can't. Yeah, ask him, this owner, if, if that's how the fuel depot is going to be like everywhere with some guy across the street hiding inside his uh, the point market. And, and saying that he doesn't do anything about that place when the manager, she talks about this, Jeremy. They all talked about it. Even the Jim Morrison where you guys, you heard me say that Jim Morrison is in one of these shells and he's making it so even though he knows now that this Jeremy has made it, he's just blown away. He does not know what I said, but he, he doesn't do with the others. He doesn't kick me out. He says, okay, well, just please get the, get the aspirin and he goes, you use the bathroom. But he had to say to me, don't let anyone else in with you. So that means that's the story now that I went into some bathroom with someone with me. You see how it changes? You can't, you can't let this guy, Jeremy, if you've got a friend, if that guy's the owner and he runs Jeremy, then yeah, you've got to tell him Jeremy's got to stop bothering Nisha Bodnar, Nina Bodnar's brother, Lana Bodnar's son. you got to make it clear to your friend who I am. Now, if you just talk to me like you did right there, you text me, it was the same as another thing. That means you didn't hear in the recordings that I made for Nina. Yeah, they might be an hour long. If she cuts it off like she did the Bennings thing, it's as though you're not there with me, Nina. I sent you a video, it was as though you were in the room with me, holding my hand, just not saying anything. Instead, I send it to you, you spent forever not watching it, and then you finally just said to me, I guess you kind of heard it, and all you said to me was, if you needed the money, you should have just asked me. You got the wrong thing from, that's like real life. I, there was no way I faked that whole thing. I didn't get Bennings in on it. No, it means you spaced out during life. You were probably looking at your phone, not understanding why it wasn't switching to something else. And once again, Nina, you cannot speak to me actually ever thinking in that old way when you've heard this story where I'm not forgiving you for not looking up from your phone when I got the, that particular group 
that you just didn't look to suddenly just take away these stands. We did not practice it. I could never get them to practice without the music they all gave me, especially your students. This flack. You put it in them. You don't know it. They all flack with me because I don't talk like you. And I say, no, you don't have to be great. You don't have to have a great violin. You don't have to compete to just play by memory. And Nina, you find it amazing when you hear me, whoa, you can play the front. I was amazed. That's all you said about a performance that I am. Um, that I played the front by memory. So I know when you say stuff like that, it's kind of like uh, Suzuki, where you just, you know, you didn't know what to say because of the way I played it. I get it. But what I wanted you to remember was that you kept telling me that I needed to point toward the the back. And 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 it's an old thing, that thing, that the, the, that the cello's got to be pointing straight forward. No, the people need to be listening. You shouldn't have to play to them, but you should also understand acoustics that that wouldn't work. What I was doing was better. I was first getting very close to the students, taking away the stand when you didn't notice so that I could play to them. They could hear me play. The F holes should be facing toward the musicians that you're playing with. It does not matter what the audience says. You, you never got that. I kept saying, you kept saying, well, who's it for? And I said, it's for us. And you said, nah, it's not like that. You got to play for this audience. What? When they're looking down at their phones, when they're just waiting for their, their, their students to stop playing so they can, you know, their kids, then they leave. And you guys worried like three nights before about a program where I said, could you guys just once for my birthday before the COVID, just let them play by memory, tell the audience what they're playing, make it more interesting to the audience and the kid, maybe the others will stay. But you should know that that's how they did it in France. They didn't need a program. That's not fun. Could you imagine going to Gabor Rido's uh, concerts like everyone went to Gabor Rido's concert because he was playing with his wife and he would just talk what do you guys got against talking and then they go well his hearing's not so good I mean Gilles oh my god when we were living with Gilles in in that bungalow in Beverly Hills right that used to be painted black do you remember we found out everything that's why the guy let us rent the place we, were, we seemed so normal compared to whoever was there before painting, painting the whole inside black. Yeah, who does that, tweakers? I know. I bet it was very calming. But instead, right, they didn't, we only noticed because you'd open the uh, counters and the inside of the counters would be black. You see, they, would, they didn't even do that kind of uh, service. They, they didn't think the next people, like as, as far as they can get away with, we're gonna save some paint inside here, in this corner here, you know. In the dark, they'll never notice the difference. It's, uh, it's that kind of service and we paid for it, right? It's expensive, but it was back then. And it was amazing that we could get an apartment there, I believe, with none of us having really a job that it was written down that we were making any money. You know how it is. Oh, there's a beautiful, huge, I would not be able to photograph this, right? It would, it, it would just look small. But yeah, it's not full, actually. I got it wrong. It's just huge. It's beautiful. And it's not quite a half. I've never seen it like that. It looks like it's like, how do I explain it? It's like it's five o'clock, if that explains it. The moon looks like it's five o'clock at any given place. It could be five o'clock at night or morning. It, it would be normal that the moon would be up like that, but not looking squashed like that. We are going by, there we go. Fuck you. Sorry, people. Uh, Jeremy, and there is the Ramada, and there is the fuel depot. You see, they got the same television sets, Ken. They are monitors that just wail at night and day. It, it mostly says, join our team. They try to get new felons from the jail. I can hear. They can hear. I was in jail. We could hear those television sets. They're all playing the same thing. And late at night, 
it, it travels. And I tried to explain to this Jeremy, and he just laughed. You see, so Ken, I was lost on this section, like, he's saying the fuel depot, those television sets don't matter. I think you should tell then the owner. And you should tell the manager, well, yeah, why are you not being nice to him anymore? Are you forgetting many years? But he knows the guy before you, you see? And once again, I'm saying that, that it was an actual garage. It wasn't holding their uh, recovery, rock recovery cans for Jeremy across the way, the point market. Yeah. So Kent, you got to understand that Jeremy does have uh, access to whatever you think. Nah, well, it's not what he says. Everyone should use the bathroom. And if Shell sees that they're not allowing us to just go in and take a key without the point market getting involved. And I have seen the people working from the point market kick people out of the bathroom. So they have the ability, can't. And I've said this in a, in a very more poignant audio. So if you're right now looking at this, sleeping or saying you can't hear it, you see, it's never gonna happen. You cannot text me until you can say, yeah, just like you, I can do this all by memory and retell the story over and over again. But you gotta let me go all the way through and you gotta understand that everything you do, it's a deflection and I have to re-explain, no, you're not taking my side. That's not what having someone's back is. That's not what I think a brother or sister should be doing. Okay, I'm sorry, I know. I just blab, but it's my thing. I'm giving you a sermon. Who talks during the sermon, right? Who writes back, I will listen to the rest of your sermon if you do it this way. But first, I must say a couple more things. Now, Nina, you don't understand. I will have to sell my phone, like buy a new phone to erase all those texts that you have written me. So anything that I've written back, I don't like this. You must understand that it'll be there forever. It will trigger me. If you don't understand about the triggers and the bipolar, you need new doctors, Nina. You have to. I made the effort. You haven't gone to all these people down here and checked out all these. Uh, <laughs> There's all these things I can just say for sure. You have not gone to where I walked down here and checked out those doctors. You don't know Mikey. He went to these doctors when... Um, he had um, anxiety. I think I've mentioned all this. He had separation anxiety because of what happened with Christina, right? They separated. Now, you and Mama wound up once at um, Ingrid's opening of a place that I, I, I knew it wasn't going to work. I was having dreams where when I went to my doctor, I said, I don't know, I'm at Peabody School. I'm there with Ingrid. I'm looking up in the sky. I know like pieces of airplane are flying at us. And, and we don't know when the next one's going to fly. It was fearful. It was a very fearful dream. But it turned out to be one of those dreams that was, it was a premonition. And I mentioned this to you, Nina, before I went. And you just kind of cited or poo-pooed it in this way, not understanding that that's one of those dreams that Freud totally understood. And, and when my doctor checked it out, he said, oh, that's some fear of um, failure. And I was fearing that her thing across from Gelson's, it was next to that Verizon, right? Where that guy doesn't let me in anymore over a COVID thing. Because I, when I went in to him to say during the COVID, hey, um, can you fix this phone? I'm having Verizon problems. And he sent me to corporate and I was going, no. And then he said, you should go to Apple. And I said, they all left town because of the COVID. And he's like, well, I can't deal with you now. Please get out. Because I was wearing flip-flops at that time. And I'm telling him, dude, we know about this. The doctors have told us I can deliver with flip-flops. Why are you saying I, I, I have a mask? But he was just like, get out of here. Just like that Steve Law. They thought it's was amazing like you nina like you hugged me and was worried are we gonna get it now and i was like wow she obviously doesn't know the truth but now that everyone knows the truth if i go back to that verizon he's just gonna expect me to be like 
business as usual. And I'm going to be like, no way, man. You knew I used to come into this place as a kid. You knew the guy. He's the one who escaped. Um, he's, he's, he escaped that concentration camp where they all just floored it. They took the fence down by all running. It's a famous thing. And he was there on that corner. And he would allow me as a kid, like the Radio Shack would in other places, just go in because they knew I had respect for all the merchandise. And they'd let me fiddle and stuff because sometimes I'd, I'd be talking to a customer and no more than the guy who was talking about, you know? And I would bring in these recordings and they'd be like, Oystrak, Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. And they wouldn't know, like Mikey, um, how, how wonderful that certain Tchaikovsky by that certain guy and why it was so wonderful. They didn't know that. They just knew it was a high fidelity recording. It was this high fidelity and it made their stereo sound awesome. And that's how, what they used to play. They just didn't know what mu- good music to pick. These people who were selling you stereos. I was that kind of kid. And he, he, he poo-pooed that. And when I finally was like, oh, maybe I'll get one of your super digital things. I, I kind of like the radio by itself in this car. But he's talking me into this big old system. And when I went over to where the radios are for the car, I'm going, remember the guy, man? He, he would only get these blah, blah, oh, they're called blah punk or something. It's, 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 it's a, a classic German car radio it was in all their cars in germany and i i was like wow this is amazing this this jewish guy i mean that must be like uh, transducing to him um that he's working with these german products selling them you know while having escaped them and i remember just as a kid kind of asking you know, you, you don't want to ask these old people really about what happened. But, and I, I was too young to express what I was thinking. But I remember just saying, that's amazing. I didn't say amazing, we didn't say that. But I just said, that's impressive or something, whatever. That, that you're working with these German um, radios when, you know, what they did to you. That kind of thing. Your people. I don't remember. I was a little kid. I tried to do, be as graceful. And he just looked at me and gave me this big smile. And he says, ah, no, you don't understand, kid. The Germans make the best radios ever. Right? I, that has stuck with me. Those kind of statements in those kind of situations. And this guy, now he owns the place. He knows me. He remembers me coming in. This younger guy now, this other guy. But during the COVID, he just decided that all that was bullshit. And, you know, he took out the radios he put in fake plastic, like, paper things because of an incident that happened. He wasn't looking and some kid with his dad just stuck their fingers in something, broke it. And then the dad didn't want to pay for it. That's a different story. So see what happens when people aren't taking care of their kids. And I wasn't that kind of kid. They always saw me without parents. And as I got older, they always treated me like I was older. They were, I was in this um, YMCA camp. They stuck me in with the older kids when I was way too young. And then I ended up just hanging out with the the count the counselors and they were just really cool they, they were like middle school teachers later i learned and uh santa barbara middle school i'm saying it's not like that everywhere um i got lucky why am i bringing this up teaching and learning you you, you don't have to be a good teacher um you have to be a good learner. You need lots of people who can listen and just let it go. And if you don't understand, but all this questioning and then just saying, well, this is the way it is. And yeah, you can do that in anyone's class. You're not going to remember anything. But my good students, they never turn me in for just talking throughout the whole class. They always got something. And the only person who ever turned on me that I realized that's not good was Jonathan, and I saw him afterwards just, because he turned on me, I turned on him, 
and just got real and said, well, now I'm not going to be a nice guy. I'm going to point out every time you do something funny and weird and just say that's, that's funny and weird. Instead, in front of you, he just started playing weird, saying it's my fault coming in in the doom key that I didn't come in, right? You're making me like do this thing so that it's easier for him to follow me. The doom key, when I'm starting it, you can't teach him like that. You should have just taken the music away and said, don't be like that with my brother. Just learn to listen. If you don't want to be a good musician, go do something else. He didn't do that. Mama didn't either. They just excused things that he said that I was like, no way. He should sit in the room and you guys tell him no way. But instead you guys went, well, he's got this, this, all this stuff that I already knew. That's tiring too. I want new stuff. I don't want to hear these old stories like I'm watching television. I don't watch the news anymore. So whatever Mama said, it was, it was fascinating to me. Because I, I could only laugh and say, I'm going to do something, Mama. I'm going to, in my head right now, record everything you said and, and send it back to you. And I did. I sent back exactly what she was talking about. And I don't know. She slept through it. I, I had places where I'm like, are you sleeping please answer this question tomorrow. And it would just be like, did your son say red? And I go, your son is now saying red. So tomorrow when he calls you, or you, know, of course, you call him and say you did watch it, he's going to ask you that question. And I did. And she had no idea. She said, I think I went to the bathroom. I just realized, oh, you didn't listen to it. And, and Nina, it was just me talking to her as though I sent her a letter. And I realized, you guys don't read my letter. But Lesia's email, yeah, that came through. I heard about it on the day of Mama's birthday, before we even played, before anything happened. And I remember I was in a place where I wasn't even having the front of my hair done anymore. You know what I mean? The hair didn't matter. But I'd let the back, I said to the guy, Be, do whatever you want with the back of my hair. And they would do stuff and suddenly go, wow, I've never been able to do this. Can I take a picture of the back of your head for, um, what was it, for my portfolio? I was like, cool. They feel comfortable because I'm never going to look at it. And I just remember walking away from playing that lugubrious piece, feeling like, oh my God, Lessa did that. And then we're playing this deathmatch piece. And I just wanted to leave like I always do. I just wanted to leave the fact that I had played. And so I hide out, like I always do, after playing. But someone tracks me down, and they find me in one of those rooms at the Boys and Girls Club, and I have my back turned, like I'm just looking at a wall, like hoping nobody will notice me. And someone came in, and I guess they wanted to say how we played, and I hate that part too, right? When they're saying, it was so wonderful, whatever. The thing is, I'm just, I feel bad. I, I just say thank you, but I'm not feeling it. It doesn't feel um, honest. So I'm just looking at this wall going, what is this that I'm feeling? Why am I trying to stay away from that huge bunch of people out there? I got to go talk to all those people. They know me. They know my mom. Yikes. So instead, I'm hiding in this room. Someone came and found me, and they could feel like, oh, I don't think this person wants to turn around. And so all they said was, wow, the back of your hair, it's amazing. And then they walked away. And I realized that's why I did it. So if someone comes b- behind me, as you know, bipolars don't like that, Nino, right? Yeah. We don't like to be surrounded. We don't like someone coming straight into our face. We don't like people questioning our, our stories. We don't like ever feeling like you're repeating what a cop does. And you, Nina, and Mama, you do that in my conversations. Maybe you do it in, with others and they don't feel it the same way, but because I've had more... Um, interactions with cops like start to finish i always end up in jail there's a whole big middle section where i hang out in the car with them and they lecture me i know they're wrong i know they don't know me they can't be lecturing me like that but they've always done it thinking they're being good my big you know i think you didn't have a good situation with your father i know what that's like and boom they know what it's like nina do you know what it was like being in a in my rock and roll bands, not, not, not the ones that Kent are in. He lost a different kind of hearing. The ones that I were, was in, the ones that I toured with, the amount of time that 
I was in like these cars where I didn't know if the guy was driving okay. I, I just wanted to jump out the window, but the window was down throughout most of the tour and it went into my ear and I got this infection. And I mean, by, by the time I got home and saw a doctor, which was free, you understand? That's another thing. They always helped me over there with all my worst problems. And over here, it's not free. And they've done things just super wrong, my doctor has told me, that I'm learning now. They, they, you know, they got me hooked on Darvacet. They gave me way too many of them. They didn't know it was a clinic. They didn't know. Another time I had some sort of, I don't know what kind of operation it was, just a little thing. But the person was reading the package to figure out how to do this little operation. That's scary. And they say it's not going to hurt, but you saw them drop the package. You're wondering if that means anything. And it really hurt because like, like, like a dentist, like the reason I don't go to dentists, um, the person decided to be all professional and not do enough. And then they have to go, oh, we'll put some more of that Novocaine, but now it's going to hurt because it's in this spot. And I'm like, why didn't you just do it to begin with? And they're like, well, we got to be professional. we got to find out how much you scream. And that other little operation in the clinic, I screamed a lot that people were coming from the other offices just to see what was going on. And now they were watching me, writhing there in pain. And she's sticking another thing in my ear, saying, okay, I might have to give you a third shot in this spot so you don't feel it. And I'm like, it feels like you're scraping inside of my brain. Stop. They actually, she, thankfully, actually stopped this operation. I think I I got enough of it. And I'm glad she did because it it turned out it was going to come back anyways. And I finally, the next time, I just did it naturally. But I remember at one point, it it was when I was... uh, with Laura, Nina, and I had to go do a Mac thing, even though I told you, you know, it's a golf ball. And there was a golf ball sticking out of my ear. I do not know how everyone at that fest, Parker, who came around me, wasn't going, oh my God, it looks like you got a Dumbo ear with this golf ball just hanging there. It was disgusting. And somehow you guys played and had me play, and I did it. And everyone came around me. I think some went, oh, you know, like the nurses of the Mac came up and said, oh, that is, that does look scary. And they gave me these reasons of what to do, whatever. And in the end, I just went home and I remember it just exploded on its own. I just put something very hot next to it. Something just, I couldn't stand that, the pain and the feeling. And it exploded. Yeah, very gross. Like, uh, <laughs> like the... That wonderful comedian, we're just going to say the mothers don't want me mentioning it because he dies in a wrong way. But Robin Williams was the last person to see this guy alive doing drugs. And he was known for just ad-libbing in um, this movie, right? A a, a National Lampoon thing. Come on, you guys all know. Um, Toga, right? And the food fight. That's where um, at at, um, Juilliard and the music and... Um, what is it? The Manhattan School of Music. We would just in the we would give them fifty bucks or something. I forgot what it was. We would all get money together and we'd have a food fight, and then we would just pay. There was a penalty for having a food fight coming from this national lampoon. But I'm going back to this big old golf ball under my ear that exploded. It's called a benign cyst, I suppose, but they're scary, and I've had three of them in the same place. Yeah, they just keep coming back. Um. Yeah, it's the way to get out toxins, I guess. Um, But this golf ball, it it just exploded like the guy, he puts mayonnaise in his mouth, this comedian, and they ask, what are you for uh, Halloween? And then he squeezes his cheeks, right? His cheeks were big like a like a hamster with a full cheeks. And then he squishes it in front of everyone at this table, right? So they're all grossed out and they decide they're too old to be trick-or-treating or Halloweening like they're doing. And then the movie's over, right? But that's what happened to my ear. It went all against this wall while I was watching television trying not to think about it. Laura walked in the room and just was that's so disgusting and i'm like god it wouldn't have happened had i not gone to that mac thing 
I would have just been alone. It would have happened before. You wouldn't even have walked in the room. But later, when we were breaking up, she cried and said, I can't believe I sat with you when you had that ear thing, right? She was apologizing to herself that she had been like pretending to care during that whole ear thing and actually made it that because it was so gross, it made it right that she was mad at me afterwards, like that she sat through something. Like I I made her, you know, have to look at my ugly face, I suppose, and ear for weeks until it exploded. And then it was on the wall behind me where I was going, oh my God, I think it exploded. Like I still didn't know what happened. Yeah. That's girls. That was girls mothering me. They said, yeah, I'll do anything. I'll have your back. But when you're really there in pain, yeah, we're all alone. I'm going to end with Kurt Cobain because there was another lady I met today at a 7-Eleven and she she looked like Kurt Cobain. She was all dressed up like Kurt Cobain and she had those, the jeans and the, the shoes that he always wore up to his death. And, uh, just look like him and I was like whoa do you like Kurt Cobain and she's just like never heard of him and I'm I'm like please look him up Nirvana but I know she probably won't so I'm gonna end I know she probably thought ah he died he's bipolar it's probably too aggressive this music yeah Nina no it's not he ended it sounded like the Beatles the thing that you didn't want to play at Babushka's thing before she died you know with you didn't want to do the Beatles, you were just standing there going, I feel so uncomfortable. How did somebody make you so uncomfortable to play the Beatles? Like I said, it's environment. It might have been Mama or one of your teachers. Uh, Yeah, saying that the Beatles were overrated. No, it's Gilles. Yeah, Gilles just said, I don't know what the Beatles are about. Dude, Gilles, come on, just because you couldn't understand the words. Yikes, and that that everyone in France just says that. It's because you guys don't understand the words. We play them at at Christmas time. You know, it'll be 24 hours Beatles. Uh, Thanksgiving, it'll be 24 hour Beatles with like one thing of you can get everything you want at Alice's restaurant. Expect, accepting Alice, you can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant come on down it's around the back just a half a mile back from the railroad tracks right remember that one that I I cannot tell a lie I put that 8 by 10 glossy underneath all that trash you remember that you were littering Yeah, on Thanksgiving, they're going to take us in. I said I want blood and guts and veins in my teeth. And that's when the government said, you know what? You are the man for us. All right, let's say goodnight to Kurt Cobain. We love you, Kurt. We love you, Lee McMillan. We bet you guys are jamming out there in the nomad Afterlife, Denny's. Yeah, they got music now at Denny's and art. Um, What would you say? This goes for all of you who know me. It goes for everyone, people. Kurt Cobain, his last words, his last song, it just has a little cello playing two simple notes. Too bad it's a Juilliard uh, student who had to be, well, graduate, who had to be attached to some tuner, didn't realize that Kurt Cobain was doing his own open tuning, and he he never played in tune, he never strung the guitars properly, um, and uh, yeah, he never had new strings. And that's why it sounds so wonderful. And she should have just used her ear, it was just two notes, and tuned to him. But instead they had to do all this trickery, they say, and it sounds weird. It sounds like there's a, um, the cellist is actually a computer or synthesizer. You know, it's not the same. Yeah, but they just said, well, it doesn't really matter. It cost them a lot of money, it cost them days to try to fix her intonation, and she just blamed it on Kurt Cobain. Ah, oh, 
Yeah, Juilliard cellist. No, you didn't use your ear. You didn't listen to him. You didn't understand it. You got paid for it. Oh, Steve Albini had to fix it. It was all done in analog, nothing digital. Yeah, he didn't know what it was yet. Kurt Cobain. Yeah, guys, come on. Yeah, he just sang, uh, All alone is all we are. All alone is all we are. All alone is all we are. It is zero zero fifty five. That means it's almost one o'clock. The English say, Do you know where your children are? The French say, Do you know where your lovers are? And the Americans say, do you know where you are? No, they say, do you know what time it is, please? Thanks. Have a nice day.